Welcome to the Air Gun Show. We've got an exciting gun on the test bench this week. It's the brand new Daystate Pulsar. But before that, we're down on the farm targeting feral pigeons and collared doves. We're back out on the farmyard today targeting collared doves and feral pigeons. We were last filming here probably best part of a year ago now, but I've been back several times since because this kind of pest control really does hinge on being relentless, particularly at this time of year with peak nesting season just around the corner and numbers will really spiral if you don't keep on top of those birds. Now, from what the farmers told us, there are quite a few about, so we'll take a look and see what we can find. Right, well you can see why the doves do so well here. Firstly, these barns provide great habitat, shelter from the elements, and lots of places to nest in amongst the beams and rafters. But on top of that, there's just absolutely loads of this maize silage around, and that is just food on tap for pigeons and doves. Now the problem they're posing is not just by eating it, but also their droppings. They're going into the feed and crusting up all sorts of machinery around the farm. Now that's posing a constant disease risk, not just to the livestock, but also to the people who work here. And it's not just avian pests that are enjoying a free meal on the farm, rats have also muscled in. Well, that was a bit of a bonus. Spotted that rat feeding in the corner there, crept in position, whacked it over with a headshot. Brilliant start. That bonus rat was a welcome addition to the bag but it's time to tackle those feral pigeons. And it's going to take some forethought to make sure it's done without causing any harm to the livestock, machinery, or buildings. Well, any of you that saw the previous episode we shot here will know that we have to be very careful about taking shots. Although there are quite a few feral pigeons moving about in this barn, a lot of the roof is actually quite flimsy and we don't want to make holes in it. So I'm having to limit myself to only shooting the birds that are sat right in amongst those joists where I've got a very safe backstop. You can hear the pellets striking those joists after passing through the birds' heads. After hitting the metal backstop, they fall harmlessly to the ground rather than tearing through the roof. Right, it's not particularly sporting shooting. You do have to be absolutely ruthless with this, but it is pest control. However, I'm still limiting myself to headshots because I want to achieve humane kills. With no more safe shots available from my initial firing point, it's time to move inside the cattle shed to get a different angle. Well, well, there's another one. The birds are starting to get a bit flighty now, but there are still a couple left. So I was going to move around, see if I can find one or two more in shootable positions. As well as scanning the rafters ahead of me, I also remember to check behind. Feral pigeons will often sit tight when they think the danger has passed, and it's easy to overlook these birds. Right, 
this really is the element of the legal limit air gun. As much as I like using FAC, it would be lethal to use it in here and pose a serious risk of damaging that roof. Sub 12 foot pound, absolutely perfect. And with the ultimate sporter being so quiet, the K's are paying absolutely no attention to us. Right, well, I think we've had the best of it in here now. Although these aren't the cleverest birds in the world, they've certainly cottoned on to the fact that we pose a threat. A lot of them have cleared off, and the few that are remaining just aren't presenting safe shots. But we have noticed a few birds moving around in the yard, so we'll go out and give that a try. I'm going to pick up the birds that I can safely get to, and we'll move on out there. Apart from keeping an eye on the backdrop, I've also done my best to shoot pigeons that will drop to where I can pick them up. It's important to clear up after culling farmyard pests, but don't get in amongst the livestock unless you know it's safe to. The first round of the cull has yielded a decent tally, which will contribute to the ongoing effort to keep feral pigeon numbers under control and reduce the problems they cause around the farm. Hopefully, the second stage of the hunt will be equally productive. Right, I'm going to try setting up here for a while. It's a bit of an overgrown hedgerow and it's a favourite place with the collar doves. They often pitch here, have a bit of a look round before they commit themselves to landing within the silage clamp for a feed. Now, I could go the length of building a hide, but to be quite honest, the birds around here are accustomed to a fair amount of noise and disturbance from the farm machinery and the farm workers. And I think as long as we keep still and keep quiet, there's every chance that one or two will flight in while we're here. So I reload the ultimate sporter in anticipation of the arrival of those collared doves. Let's hope we get some fast fire action to make the most of that 10 shot magazine. Sitting still and keeping quiet, it's not long before the first collared dove lands within range. Well there you go, nice clean kill, straight through the head, great start from this spot. There's no need to worry too much about the disturbance caused by noisy farm machinery. Farmyard pests get used to it and tend to carry on as usual without spooking. And sure enough, the birds fly back in and I've soon got another dove in my sights. Right, we had a nice little flurry there, but it's gone quiet again, so I'm going to leave the feral pigeons here, head over to the yard and pick up what collared doves I can get to. Before tackling the gate, I unload the ultimate sporter to make it safe, and lean it against the fence to keep my hands free. Collared doves taste a lot like wood pigeon and are a mealtime favourite in my house. Irritatingly, some of today's bag aren't going to make it into the pot because of where they've fallen. Right, annoyingly, there's quite a wide and very wet and dirty ditch here and several of the doves have dropped in there. It's frustrating because I quite like them for the pot, but I'm not going to scrabble about trying to retrieve them, so I've only got the one to take home with me. Right, well, going by what we've managed to pick up, that's quite a respectable bag. Of course, there are feral pigeons and collared doves left here, and we're going to have to get back again, but that's just the way it goes with pest control. It's a year-round job and it takes frequent visits. 
One thing worth pointing out is that farmyard pest control, although it's not the most glamorous kind of shooting you're going to do, can really open up doors. If you win a farmer's trust by shooting sensibly and responsibly around the farm, it's very likely they may have some woodland, open fields where you can then be permitted to go out shooting rabbits, wood pigeons and grey squirrels. So next time you're out and about and you notice a farmyard that's overrun with pests, could be very well worth popping your head round and offering your services. The ultimate sporter sorting out the farmyard pests there. And now it's over to the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News. Brought to you by the Air Gun Center. This sumptuous air gun is the new limited edition Royale, designed by the Air Gun Centre and Daystate to mark the Essex Gun Shop's 35th anniversary. Limited to 150 rifles, it's based on the Regal XL and comes cradled in a black pepper laminate stock with walnut cap forend and pistol grip. Other special features include high gloss black metalwork, nickel breech block with field scene engraving and a custom trigger guard. The £1,700 package also includes a custom hugger shroud and silencer, swivel studs and MTC Mamba Light serial numbered scope. You can see more of the Royale in the forthcoming edition of Airgun Shooter magazine. The HFT Masters series got off to a flying start with the inaugural shoot attracting 100 shooters to Lear Valley last Saturday. Top honours went to Barry Smith who beat Tony Archer in the shoot off after the pair returned scores of 58. Richard Woods finished third in the open class with 57, while Harry Kalajian topped the Springers with 55. Tom Willingham scored 52 to win the junior class, and Steve Youngs was top 2-2 shooter with 50. Organisers Ian Banbridge and Roger Late have praised all the shooters and volunteers who helped make the event a success. The egg and licensing debate in Scotland has gone ahead without crucial evidence. Basque submitted a Freedom of Information request asking for the missing air gun crime statistics from last year. But we've been told those figures will be a year late. Basque said the absence of the most recent evidence is unacceptable. But MSPs didn't seem to think so and went ahead with agreeing the general principles of the bill. And finally, shooting may be good for the economy and conservation, but it's also good for health and well-being. That's the message of a new infographic released by Basque. In its latest survey of shooters, seven-eighths of respondents said they get moderate to high intensity exercise from shooting. 95% said it's important to their personal well-being, while it's emerged that people make an average of 25 friends from shooting. That was the Airgun Show News. I've been looking forward to getting my hands on this week's test gun. It's the Daystate Pulsar in pre-production guise. Probably one of the most technologically advanced air guns in the world, this compact little bullpup is certainly a head turner. It's also pretty expensive, costing between £1,785 and £1,995, depending on what version you go for. So let's see exactly what you get for your money. This gun's standout feature has to be its bullpup design. It measures up at just 76 centimetres and weighs in at between 3.4 and 3.8 kilos in its various stock options. There's a walnut version, smoke and forest laminates, a full synthetic and the limited edition OS. That stock provides a very comfortable handle for the gun, complete with ballistic nylon drop down pistol grip and forend with integral accessory rail. The sculpted pistol grip gives brilliant trigger attack and the fluted forend makes for a really comfortable hold. The Pulsar sits really nicely in the shoulder and having the point of balance so close to your body makes it extremely pointable and really steady on aim. It's an ambidextrous stock but the butt plate can be adjusted up and down and left or right to really tailor gun fit. The cheek support and side lever can also be reversed for left-handers. 
Finish and engineering are of the high standard you'd expect from Daystate. The anti-glare finish not only helps to keep the pulsar discreet in the field, it also provides protection from the elements and really complements the ballistic nylon stock parts. The scope rails are long enough to cover most scope mounting options and of course the bullpup configuration means there's no magazine to get in the way. However, that configuration does mean that the scope sits quite high above the barrel. I've gone for low mounts to help reduce any problems with canting the gun. Daystate have also thought about cant and included a level to help keep your shooting straight. Another standout feature of the Pulsar is its electronic internals. Utilising technology that Daystate has been refining over the last decade. Daystate describes the MCT system as essentially being an electronic regulator. It makes for extremely consistent shooting and most importantly, the Pulsar's electronic heart is sealed inside a watertight box, so you don't need to worry about getting it wet. To charge the Pulsar, simply unscrew the cap at the front of the forend, connect to the hose of your diving bottle and fill up. The 177 calibre test gun gave 220 shots at just over 11 foot-pounds, and you can expect about 250 in 2.2. Daystate states the 35 foot-pound FAC version model as returning a very healthy 80 shots per fill. The neat display screen in the stock gives a pressure reading and also provides low pressure and battery warnings, although the battery should be good for thousands of shots. It also enables you to toggle through an options menu so you can choose between power settings, magazine counter on-off and laser on-off. There are three power settings and the laser is sunk into the forestock. When activated, the laser comes on when the crossbar safety is pushed across into the on position. If you can see the laser, you know the gun is armed. It can also be zeroed to provide an additional aiming point and is really handy for range estimation based on how far above or below the crosshair it falls. The Pulsar has a 10-shot magazine that's operated by the slick new side lever system and if the lever's open, the gun won't fire. It makes for very fast, smooth reloading and performed flawlessly during our testing. One of my favourite things about electronic day states is their brilliant trigger systems and the two-stage adjustable unit on the Pulsar is even better than earlier models. The wide flat blade gives plenty of feel, making it easy to discern the light stop of the second stage before the very crisp let off. So, it's got a brilliant trigger and lots of other electronic wizardry, but how does it all come together? Let's shoot some targets and find out. Well, that certainly didn't disappoint. You can probably see that there's quite a breeze pushing across the range today, so we pulled it into 20 metres. However, this five shot group has fallen comfortably within 10 millimetres from centre to centre. The electronic trigger and internals make for a very fast firing cycle. It's only a very short period of time between touching the trigger and the pellet leaving the barrel. Now that means the shot is less influenced by movements caused by your breathing, or your pulse so effectively it's harder to mess up the shot and that's certainly reflected in this accuracy today. Gun's really comfortable to shoot and it's also fairly quiet thanks to the baffling within the shroud and if you wanted to make it even quieter you can always fit Daystate's Airstream silencer. Costing the best part of two grand the Pulsar really isn't a cheap air gun but then it isn't supposed to be. Daystate is renowned for pushing the boundaries and using cutting edge technology and this air gun represents the absolute pinnacle of that. But if you've got the money and want an air gun that shoots like a dream, get a Pulsar into your shoulder and you'll probably appreciate just why it commands a top end price tag.
That's all we've got time for this week, but you can see an even more detailed review of the Daystate Pulsar in the forthcoming July issue of Airgun Shooter magazine. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.